Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 28th of April. India's top court stays demolition drive in violence hit area of New Delhi. IMF warns inflation current account deficit to remain near term risk for Pakistan. And Sri Lanka promises impartial probe after first that in weeks of protests. And now for all the details. India's Supreme Court on Wednesday ordered a stay on demolition shortly after civic authorities began tearing down illegal structures in New Delhi's Jahangir Puri area, which recently witnessed communal violence. The court ordered that the status quo should be maintained until the next hearing in the case on Thursday. India's Supreme Court on Wednesday stayed demolition of small illegal retail shops shortly after civic authorities began tearing down the structures under protection of police and security forces in New Delhi's Jahangir Puri area. The drive to demolish the properties came four days after violence in the area during a Hindu religious procession. A three-judge bench of the top court headed by the Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana ordered that the status quo should be maintained until the next hearing on Thursday. The petitioner to the court said MCD, Municipal Corporation of Delhi, governed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP, had not alerted the local shopkeepers before the raising operation. नहीं अभी कुछ ऐसा नहीं अभी तो ग्राउंड पे यहाँ जरा एसेसमेंट करने दो काम भी करने दो यार यस ओके ओके एमसीडी ने भी रोक दिया हम और पुलिस की तरफ so far, police have arrested at least 23 people in connection with the violence over the weekend. This month, several homes and shops were also torn down in central Madhya Pradesh and western Gujarat states in the aftermath of incidents of communal violence. Both states are ruled by the BJP. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated the three-day Global Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit in western Gandhinagar city where he said that to promote the traditional medicine industry, India will soon launch Ayush Mark, which will give authenticity to quality Ayush products made in country. Mauritius Prime Minister and WHO Chief were also present on the occasion. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday inaugurated the three-day Global Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit at Gandhinagar in Western Gujarat State. His Mauritian counterpart Praveen Kumar Jugnod and Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, Director General World Health Organization, were present on the occasion. The summit will help uncover investment potential and give a fillip to innovation, research and development, startup ecosystems and the wellness industry. Speaking on the occasion, PM Modi said India will soon launch the Ayush Mark to recognize traditional medicine products which will give the authenticity to quality Ayush products of the country. Ayush is the acronym for Alternate Systems of Medicine, Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. Bharat is patient. Ayush Mark bhi manane ja raha hai. जिसकी एक ग्लोबल पहचान बनेगी भारत में बने उच्चतम गुणवत्ता के आयुष प्रोडक्ट पर यह मार्क लगाया जाएगा यह आयुष मार्क आधुनिक टेक्नोलॉजी के प्रावधानों से युक्त होगा इससे विश्व भर के लोगों को Quality Ayush products ka bharosa milega. PM Modi also said that India will soon start the Ayush visa category for those who come to the country seeking traditional ways of treatment. WHO Chief Dr. Tedros stressed on the development of traditional medicines, while Mauritius Prime Minister said it was a matter of pride for him to participate in the summit. 
Later, PM Modi and Mauritius counterpart held a bilateral meeting aimed at bolstering ties. Both leaders discussed the ongoing development partnership and cooperation in defence, capacity building, people-to-people -people exchanges and Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration. They also reviewed progress of the Metro Express project and the proposals for an Ayush Centre of Excellence in Mauritius. Mauritius Prime Minister is on an eight-day visit to India. He will also pay a visit to northern Varanasi city apart from his official engagements in Gujarat and capital New Delhi. The International Monetary Fund has warned that near-term risk from rising inflation and a current account deficit has increased for Pakistan and it has sharply revised its projections ahead of talks with Pakistani officials expected this week. Meanwhile, Pakistan's newly elected Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif in his first cabinet meeting on Wednesday instructed ministers to prepare for war against poverty, inflation and unemployment, the challenges the previous government failed to counter. IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has kept its growth forecast for Pakistan unchanged at 4% for fiscal year 2022, though it noted that near-term risk from rising inflation and a changing external environment had increased and sharply revised the global moneylender's projections for the country's current account deficit and inflation. In the World Economic Outlook released on Tuesday, the IMF projected Pakistan's current account deficit to hit $18.5 billion this fiscal year. Pakistan requires gross external financing of over $35 billion on a current account deficit of 5.3% of GDP in 2022, it stated. Meanwhile, the World Bank in a biannual report pointed out Pakistan needed to take urgent measures to tighten the fiscal belt for ensuring debt sustainability. It cautioned that rising food and energy inflation was expected to diminish purchasing power of households. Pakistan's newly appointed finance minister, Mifta Ismail, a former IMF economist, is expected to restart talks with the IMF this week to resume a stalled $6 billion bailout program, but negotiations will be tough with many targets off track. Energy subsidies announced by ousted Premier Imran Khan, which are burning through Pakistan's public finances, are also an immediate concern. A rollback would be politically difficult with Khan retching a pressure for fresh elections and consumer inflation already clocking in at 12.7% in March. Moving on, Pakistan Tehreek in Saf PTI's regional president Sardar Tanvir Ilyas was earlier this week elected as new premier of Pakistan administered Kashmir in an election boycotted by the opposition. PTI chief Imran Khan nominated Ilyas as the party's candidate after his hand-picked premier Sardar Abdul Qayyam Niazi resigned on Thursday after 25 lawmakers of his party revolted and moved a resolution of no confidence motion against him. His ouster came days after Imran Khan lost his premiership in a no-confidence vote in Pakistan's National Assembly. The party workers had blamed Niazi of ignoring fundamental rights of the people in the illegally occupied region. हमारे कारपुनान जो है इस हुकूमत से वजीरात मजाक कश्मीर की परफॉर्मेंस से नालात है ताफ़ज़ात है जो कि गाये बगाये वक्तन फ़ोक्तन हुकूमते फेडरल हुकूमत के पास पेश किए जाते रहे यहाँ भी इनका खदशात का जार किया जाता रहा तो नतीजा दर उसमें कोई जो है खातर पार वो उसमें पेश अप ना हो सके Sri Lankan police will launch an impartial and transparent investigation of clashes with protesters after the first death in weeks of unrest over the government's handling of the economy, President Gotabaya Rajpaksa has said. Police fired life ammunition to scatter protesters on Tuesday in the town of Rambukana, northeast of the capital Colombo, killing one person and wounding a dozen. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa on Wednesday said he expects the police to investigate clashes between police officers and anti-government protesters that led to the first death in weeks of civil unrest. Deeply distressed following the tragedy in Rambukana, I have every confidence that a strict impartial investigation will be carried out, Rajapaksa said in a tweet. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, the younger brother of the Prime Minister, in a Twitter post urged all citizens to refrain from violence as they protest. He said that police will carry out an impartial and transparent inquiry into the incident. 
police fired live ammunition to scatter protesters on Tuesday in Rambukana, a town around three hours northeast of the commercial capital Colombo, killing one person and injuring a dozen more. Demonstrations have raged across the South Asian island of 22 million people for weeks, with people voicing anger against what they perceive as government mishandling of the economy that has led to shortages of essentials and prolonged power cuts. Sri Lankan police has imposed a curfew in southwestern region of Rambukana until further notice following the incident. Tuesday's death was the first fatality since largely peaceful protests began last month. It comes as Sri Lankan officials meet with IMF, the International Monetary Fund, on a potential emergency loan program aimed at staving off a shortage of fuel and other essentials. The IMF on Wednesday said discussions are at an early stage and that any deal would require adequate assurances that Sri Lanka can resolve the unsustainability of its debt situation. The United States, the United Nations and other international organizations have condemned Tuesday's deadly blast that targeted educational institutions in Afghan capital Kabul, killing at least six persons. No group has claimed responsibility for the attacks so far. In the Daste Bachi neighborhood of Afghan capital Kabul, two blasts hit Abdul Rahim Shahid High School, killing at least six and injuring several others on Tuesday. Some reports suggest that casualties were much higher. Another blast took place on the same day near the Mumtaz Tuition Center. No one has claimed responsibility for the incident as of yet. The United States, Afghan politicians, humanitarian organizations and Kabul-based diplomatic missions have all condemned the incident. The United States State Department spokesperson Ned Price in a statement expressed condolences to the Afghan families and stated that the perpetrators must be brought to justice. The United Nations mission in Afghanistan, UNAMA, also condemned the heinous attack on schools and said, those responsible for the crime targeting schools and children must be brought to justice. The UNICEF Executive Director Catherine Russell in a statement said she was horrified by the brutal attacks targeting school children in Kabul. She said attacks on children and education facilities constitute grave rights violations. Meanwhile, the Taliban government said that Islamic Emirate is committed to punishing the perpetrators and preventing the repeat of such attacks in the future. Since assuming power in August last year, Afghanistan's Taliban rulers claim to have secured the country. But international authorities and analysts warn there is still a risk of militancy resurging and the Islamic State militant group has claimed responsibility for multiple attacks in the past. With the sweltering heat continuing in several Indian states and the temperatures crossing over 35 degrees Celsius, zoo authorities are taking special measures in providing relief to these helpless animals and keeping the inmates cool. Sizzling heat in India's northern Agra city has prompted zoo authorities to take special measures to keep the inmates cool. Zoo animals are receiving special treat of juicy fruits to help them fight the harsh summer sun. Other special arrangements like water coolers, ponds and sheds have been made by the authorities to bring down the temperatures for animals. The mercury levels in the city have been hovering over 40 degrees Celsius mark. Water sprinklers are used at regular intervals around enclosures to make the environment soothing for the animals. Either water sprinkler is used in the evening time. तालाब में तो ताजा वाटर हमेशा फिल भरा हुआ मिलेंगे इसलिए आज बालू अपना अपना अंदर जाके बैठ के पानी से कूद करके उसका गर्मी का कट कर सकता है और काना में जो फ्रूट जूसी फ्रूट्स होता है जो वाटरमेलन मस्कमेलन ग्रेप्स अंबोबा ग्रेनेट है वो सब वो देने की वजह से उसका थोड़ा उसमें से अच्छा खासा जूसी मिल जाता है उसे और रिफ्रेशमेंट भी होता है एट नंदन कनन जूलॉजिकल पार्क इन ईस्टर्न भुवनेश्वर सिटी Zoo authorities have also made special arrangements to help the animals fight the harsh summer sun. Amid the heat wave, elephants are allowed to wallow in the pond twice a day to get relief from scorching heat. They have installed water shower thatch sheds to keep the animals cool during summer. The authorities have also made arrangements for birds and reptiles to beat the penetration of direct sunlight. 
Summers in India are a difficult time when soaring temperatures lead to numerous casualties for humans as well as animals. Possible reasons for the rising temperatures range from global warming to greater urbanization, leading to taller buildings and diminishing green cover. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.